In this lesson, we're going to be comparing numbers using inequality statements. Now, before we've been using number lines. An inequality statement uses the symbols greater than and less than. So an inequality. That means we're going to use the symbols less than and we're going to use the symbol greater than. When we use the symbol less than, it means the number on the left is smaller than the number on the right. So if I say that 9 is less than 10, this would be a true inequality statement. If I use the greater than symbol, it means that the number on the left is bigger than the number on the right. So I can say that 10 is greater than 9. That's how we use these symbols. I can use them with positive or negative numbers. I could say that negative 3 is less than negative 1. And I could say that negative 1 is greater than negative 3. If I looked at a number line, 9 would be to the left of 10. So 9 is smaller than 10. Remember, numbers on a number line, if they're to the left, they're smaller. If they're to the right, they're bigger. If I look at the number line, 10 is to the right of 9. So 10 is greater than 9. Same with the negatives. Negative 3 is to the left of negative 1. Negative 1 is to the right of negative 3. We're going to use this information to help us write inequality statements for lots of numbers. Let's take a look at our first example. We're going to write one inequality statement to show the relationship among these three shoe sizes. 10 and a half, 8, and 9. We're going to do it two different ways. First, we're going to do it from least to greatest, and then we're going to do it from greatest to least. Sometimes it helps to put these numbers on a number line before we write our inequality statement. So I'm going to draw a number line. All of my numbers are positive, so I don't need to put zero in the middle. I don't need any negative numbers on my number line. So I'm going to put zero all the way over here. And my biggest number is 10 and a half. So I need to go up to at least 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now I've made the marks and I'm counting by ones, but I don't need to label every single mark. So I'm going to label it 1, 2, 3, 4 with a 5 here, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 here. That's going to help me know how I'm counting. I'm counting by ones, but it doesn't make it messy. It doesn't take a lot of visual space. If I want to graph 10 and a half, it's 10 and one half units to the right of zero. So there's 10 and one half. If I want to graph eight, it's eight units to the right. 5, 6, 7, 8. All right, there is 8. If I want to graph 9, it's 9 units to the right of 0. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's what my number line would look like. If I want to write an inequality statement, I now have them in the order of least to greatest. That's what I want to do first, least to greatest. Least means the smallest. Greatest means the biggest. So my least number, the number furthest to the left of all three of these numbers, is 8. And 8 is smaller than 9. 9 is the next one. So 8 is less than 9. 10 and a half is the next number up. 9 is smaller than 10 and a half. So 9 is less than 10 and 1 half. 
So we wrote, wrote one inequality statement to compare these three numbers. It's kind of like writing them in order from least to greatest. We've done that already. Only we put the less than symbol in between each number. If we wanted to write from greatest to least, the biggest to the smallest, then we're going to go in the other direction. We're going to start with our biggest number, 10 and 1 half, because it's furthest to the right of 0. And we know that is greater than, now I'm using the greater than symbol, 9, because 9 is 9 units to the right, 10 and a half is 10 and a half units to the right. And we know that 9 is greater than 8. 8 is closer to 0 than 9, so it's a smaller number. It's further to the left. Here are our two inequality statements, one from least to greatest, one from greatest to least. Now some people might be tempted to write it this way. To say that 10 and 1 half is greater than 9 and 8 is less than 10 and 1 half. And while these are all true, it is not the way we write it. This doesn't allow us to compare 8 and 9. They're only being compared to 10 and a half, not to each other. So this is not the way we write it. We need to make sure things go in order and that our inequality symbols are the same for all parts of the statement. One of the ways we use inequality statements is to interpret data. So if we're looking at a bunch of information that we've gotten, uh, then we can compare the information, put it in order from least to greatest, say which is bigger or smaller. That's what we mostly use inequality statements for in real life. In this example, Mary is comparing rainfall totals for May, June, and July. May, June, and July. It's important that we look at our table and read the information here. Here's the months. So all the information in this row is for May. All the information in this row is for June. And this row represents the information for July. Across the top, it tells us what the numbers mean. This number means that in May, the total rainfall was 2 and 3 tenths inches. This column represents last year's total rainfall in inches. Last year in May, we had 3 and 7 tenths inches of rain. This last column represents the change in total rainfall from last year to this year. So the difference between the two numbers, whether it got bigger or smaller. This negative 1 and 4 tenths inches means that we had 1 and 4 tenths less rain this year than last year. From last year to this year. So we had less rain this year than we did last year. We're going to fill in the blanks below to create inequality statements that compare the changes in total rainfall this column right here, changes in total rainfall, change in total rainfall for each month. It's the rightmost column of the table, this one right here. So these are the three numbers that we're going to compare. If we wanted to put them on a number line, we've got a negative number, and we've got some positive numbers, and they're being measured in tenths. So we would want to make sure that we write our number line in tenths. We have a positive number and a negative number, so it's important that we have a zero. And I'm going to mark them in tenths. So one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to call this five tenths. Ten, there's ten, that's one whole, or ten tenths. And we need to go up to one and four tenths, so I need some more down here. So that's one and one tenth, one and two tenths, 
one and three tenths, even more, one and four tenths, there's one and five tenths. So if I were to plot these numbers on the number line, negative, forgot my negatives, negative one and four tenths, here's negative one, negative one and one tenth, one and two tenths, one and three, one and four. This point right here is negative one and four tenths. It's one and four tenths, or 14 units, since each unit is one tenth, to the left of zero. I want to plot three tenths, one tenth, two tenths, three tenths. There's three tenths, and if I want to plot five tenths, I already have that marked on there. There are my three numbers on my number line. Now it's really easy to write the inequality from least to greatest. The smallest number is the number that's furthest to the left. The negative number here is furthest to the left, and that makes sense. Negative numbers are always smaller than positive numbers. So negative 1 and 4 tenths is less than 3 tenths, which is less than 5 tenths. Our 5 tenths is our largest number. If I want to go from greatest to least, I need to go in the other order. My greatest number is the number furthest to the right, 5 tenths. It is greater than 3 tenths, which is greater than negative 1 and 4 tenths. This lets me see that 5 tenths is greater than both 3 tenths and negative 1 and, one, negative one and 4 tenths. I can see that negative 1 and 4 tenths is smaller than or less than both 3 tenths and 5 tenths. Now there's one more question with this. In this case, does the greatest number indicate the greatest change in rainfall? Here's our greatest number, 5 tenths. Is that the biggest amount of change that we have? Remember, change can be positive or negative, but if we want to talk about the most change, we're looking at its absolute value. We're looking at its distance from zero. Which one of these three numbers is the furthest from zero? That would be the most change. If we look at the absolute value of each of these numbers, we can see that negative 1 and 4 tenths has the greatest absolute value. It's the furthest from 0. Its arrow is the longest. So if we did the absolute value of negative 1 and 4 tenths, that would be 1 and 4 tenths. We did the absolute value of 3 tenths, that would be 3 tenths. We did the absolute value of 5 tenths, that would be 5 tenths. So, the greatest number is 5 tenths, but it does not represent the greatest change. Negative 1 and 4 tenths has the greatest absolute value, so represents the greatest change. That's how I would answer this question. Okay, so that's how we show numbers using an inequality statement. We compare them using greater than or less than. If I had three numbers, like negative three, one, and three and a half, I could start by putting them on a number line. And then it's easy to read from left to right their order. The number to the left is the smallest number, the number furthest to the right is the largest number. 
I always write my inequality statement with the same inequality symbols, either all less thans or all greater than. So we don't want to mix them together. I can write it in either order. I could say that 3 and a half is greater than 1, which is greater than negative 3. Also, remember, if I want to talk about change, change is different. Change, we're looking for the absolute value. Right? If we want the greatest change, it's the greatest absolute value. If I want the least amount of change, it's the smallest absolute value. Change can be positive or negative, but when we talk about it, we talk about the absolute value of that distance. Finish up your homework, watch this video again if you need to, and I'll see you tomorrow in class.